Welcome back, Tech Heart, you freaking rock stars, you awesome cats. Let me show you what we're getting at today. I'm gonna power on the old ThinkPad, let's go! What we're going to accomplish today is a dual boot Arch Linux and Windows 11 or 10 system with killer bootloader themes that you're looking at right now and a Lux encrypted root partition in this awesome Unlock Plymouth theme. Way cooler than unlocking with text. And a killer TUI window manager that you can log into your Linux system with. So come along for the ride. Let's go! Let's get this Windows 10 installation underway. The prerequisites is I have a USB stick with a Windows 10 ISO on it. I'm actually using a Ventoy USB stick. It has both Arch and Windows 10 ISOs on it. You'll have to get into your computer's BIOS. When I see the Lenovo logo, I press Enter. That brings up this menu, and I can press F12 to choose a temporary startup device. I'll do that. Now let's scroll down to USB HDD, or select your USB stick. Okay. So you can see I have Arch Linux and Windows 10 English. I'll select Windows 10 and let's get this puppy installed. Okay, rock and roll. Let's press next. We'll press install now. I'm not gonna share my product key with y'all, so I'll just say I don't have a product key. I can add that afterwards. You should put your product key in here. I want Windows 10 Home, accept the TOS, and get TOS roofied, because I don't know what's in there, do you? Nope, but I'm drinking it anyway. Boop. We'll do a custom install, Windows only. So my hard drive already has some stuff on it. What I'm gonna do for this demonstration is I'm gonna alt delete every single partition so that we have one big hard drive that's completely unallocated space. Okay, so this is how yours will look if you've either deleted all your partitions or you have a blank hard drive. Let's install Windows. Boom! All right, so here we're at the part of the installation where we have to do some user input. First and foremost, I'm gonna go down here to this little microphone and make sure Cortana doesn't blast in our ears. If you do want Cortana, you know, whatever you like. We're gonna blaze through this. We are not going to connect to the internet. That will let us not create a Microsoft account. I'll select United States. I'll select US. I'll skip adding a second keyboard. I will not connect to a local internet. You can click I don't have internet in the lower left over there. And I'll continue with limited setup. Okay, tech heart for my username, add yours. And I'll type in a dummy password. There we go. Now for here, I just like to put password on each of these. That is not secure. Go ahead and fill these out for yourself. If you're a Windows person, you can select whichever of these features, air quotes, that you want. But for me and my Windows install, I want none of them. So I'm just gonna tab through and select all these to none. No snooping eyes and ears for tech heart, boys and girls. All right, and I'll accept that. I'm gonna say not now. I don't want any Microsoft accounts. And I'll let that finish up. All right, guys, and we're ready to finish here. 
Oh man, do you see these two Microsoft Edge options? Either get started or maybe later. How about never ever delete me now? We'll just do maybe later. <laughs> we'll type Windows R and we'll type disk MGMT dot MSC and push enter. That'll bring up all of our partitions. We'll look more at these in the arch side, but for right now, all we're gonna focus on is our C drive. Mine is 930 gigabytes. I'll push the right mouse button and let's go down to shrink volume. Click on that. You can create an arch partition from 20 gigabytes, but I want my arch system to be bigger than the Windows partition, so I'm gonna give it 530000. So it'll have just over 500 gigabytes and my Windows will have just over 400 gigabytes. So I'll click shrink and yeah, there we go. My C drive is now 392 gigabytes and there is 517 gigabytes of unallocated space. So let's shut this window down. And we'll go over and press the Windows Start menu and the Power button and we'll do a restart. This time we're gonna enter into the BIOS. So I'll press Enter here. However, this time I want to press F1 to go into the BIOS Setup Utility. We want to make sure that Secure Boot is turned off. In your BIOS menus, go to the Security tab and find Secure Boot. Press Enter and make sure that it's disabled. Mine already is. The rule of thumb is if yours is disabled, just leave it disabled. If it is enabled, disable it now by pressing Enter and moving down to Disabled or up to Disabled. But then after the Arch Linux install, you can turn that back on. I'll do an F10 to save. And we'll catch our bias again with enter. But this time we're gonna boot into our USB F12 and we're gonna select Arch Linux ISO. Let's rock and roll. I'll select my USB drive and then Arch Linux. And here we go. Here we are in the Arch ISO installation media. I'm gonna change the font for you guys. You don't have to do this. And there we go. We got a little bit bigger of a font and let's get started. The first thing that we wanna do is make sure we're in an EFI boot. So we'll do ls slash sys firmware EFI EFI vars. And as long as you have output, you are booted into EFI. Now let's go with the Arch install. First, we'll do a locale CTL list dash key maps, and I'm gonna grep US, cause that's my country code, and I can see my country code, or my key map, is lowercase US. So now I'll load keys, US. Let's make sure we have internet, IPA. If you're on ethernet, you'll see a local IP address down there. I am not. I can see that I have a wireless device, WLAN zero. To connect to wireless, we'll run IWCTL dash dash pass phrase, and your Wi-Fi's password, then station, and your device name, mine is WLAN0, connect, and your Wi-Fi name. To test that, you can run ping 8.8.8.8, .8 and once you see it moving, press Control-C. We're connected. Now let's clear, and I'll do an LS block. Let's take a look at SDA. That's our main 931 gigabyte hard drive. SDA1 is the Windows EFI boot partition. SDA2 is a special Windows partition. SDA3 is the C drive, 413 gigabyte Windows partition, and SDA4 is a Windows recovery partition. But we don't see that free space, so let's run CF disk, and now we can see the free space from what we shrank off the C drive. Let's move to free space and press enter on new. This is gonna be a 500 megabyte, so 500M and press enter. That created SDA5. Let's move over to type and select EFI system. Now on the 517 remaining gigabytes, press enter and enter again to use all of it. And then we'll move over to write and say yes. Now you can see our two new partitions, SDA5, 500 megabytes, and SDA6, 517 gigabytes. With that SDA6, let's create a Lux encrypted device. Crypt setup, dash Y, dash V for verbose. The command is Lux format and we're gonna run that on dev SDA6. Type yes in capital letters and a password twice. You won't see that crypto looks super block signature, but you will see the command successful. Now we have to open that, so crypt setup open slash dev SDA6 
and we have to name we have to name it so we'll do lux root type the password all right now ls block we can see sda5 and now we can see sda6 which is mapped to actually dev slash mapper slash lux root but let's format mksf.fat dash f32 on dev sda5 then mkfs.ext4 on slash dev mapper lux root okay now we're going to mount our drives let's run mount slash dev mapper lux root to slash mnt then we'll make directory mnt boot let's mount slash dev sda5 to mnt boot now the way that i'll get the windows efi into our system is i'm going to do make directory slash boot oops slash mnt slash boot slash efi and i'm going to mount dev sda1 to slash mount slash boot slash efi now we can run that ls block and there's our setup for the arch system that we're going to install to our lux root is at mount our sda5 is at mount boot and the windows efi is at mount boot efi we're ready for a pack strap that's where we install the first packages onto the system we'll do pack strap slash mnt and we're going to install base linux linux dash firmware vim and if you're on amd amd dash u code but i'm on intel so i'll install intel dash u code let that run Okay, we're done, so I'll clear the screen. So we'll run genfstab dash capital U slash MNT bracket bracket slash MNT, etc. fstab. Now we can cat MNT, etc. fstab. And we can see our root partition is the lux root, slash boot is SDA5, our EFI partition, and slash boot EFI is dev sda1 the windows efi partition we're ready to arch dash truth into slash mnt and that puts us into our arch install as the root user one thing we're missing in our fstab is a swap partition or a swap file we're going to create a swap file with fallocate dash l eight gigabytes for me eight gb and we're going to put that at slash root swap underscore file we have to change the permissions with chmod 600 on slash swap file we have to mk swap to make a swap on swap file and swap on on swap file however we'll also have to edit slash etc and fstab to add that i'll put a hash swap file setup and the important line reads like this slash swap underscore file tab tab none tab tab swap tab tab defaults tab zero tab zero and that's it save that file we'll move on to some locale stuff let's do an ls slash user share zone info and press tab twice you can see the list of countries i'm in america so i'm going to write america and i'll press tab twice again it's 146 possibilities but you'll see all the different places I'm in Los Angeles. So after you've taken note of your country and locale, then we're going to do ln dash sf slash user share zone info. And for me, it's America and Los Angeles. Put a space and then etc slash local time. You can run hw clock dash dash sys to hc. We can edit nano or vim slash etc slash locale.gen I'm going to go down to en underscore us and select the first line the utf8 for me write that file and then you can run locale-gen that'll pull in enus.utf8 next we're going to echo lang capitals equals en underscore us dot utf8 bracket bracket slash etc locale.conf then echo capital key map equals us for me 
bracket bracket slash etc vconsole.conf. Then we can do an echo your host name. I'm just using arch to bracket bracket slash etc slash host name. Now we can nano or vim slash etc slash hosts. And let's append. So we'll go to the end of that. The first line is 127.0.0.1 tab local host, baby. Then colon colon one tab tab local host. The third line is 127.0.0.1 tab your host name, which was arch for me, dot local domain, and another tab and your host name again. Arch for me, baby. Write that file. Let's create the root password by running passwd and enter your root password. All right, we're all ready for the big Pac-Man install. So I'll do Pac-Man dash S and we're gonna install base devel, blues, blues dash utils, cups, dialog, DOS FS tools, EFI boot MGR, git and grub, Linux dash headers, M tools, network manager dash applet and network manager, one word, OS dash prober. That'll help us find our windows boot entries. Pulse audio dash Bluetooth reflector wireless underscore tools WPA underscore supplicant XDG dash user dash ders and XDG utils and let that rock and roll. Boom. All right, that's done. Now we have to edit. So vim for me or nano for you, slash etc slash mknitcpio.conf. In this file, we're gonna scroll down to the hooks line. Make sure that you have keyboard and key map. If you do not have keyboard and key map, insert that right after auto detect. I have keyboard and key map. So I'm gonna insert right after block the word encrypt. This will tell mkinit cpio to unencrypt our device at boot. Save that file and then we can run mkinit cpio p linux. Boom! We are now ready to install grub. So let's run grub install dash dash target equals x86 underscore 64 dash EFI dash dash EFI dash directory equals slash boot slash EFI. So we're going to use that Windows EFI partition, but we'll still have a slash boot for us. And we'll do dash dash boot loader dash ID equals grub, capital grub. That should install with no errors. Before we run grub make config, let's add our crypt device, run block ID. We are going to look for the line that's labeled with type crypt underscore looks. For me, that's dev SDA six on the bottom. And we're looking for the UUID, not the part UUID. Make sure you note that down. And mine starts with zero three C and ends with 8827. Once you've noted that crypto lux UUID down, you can edit with nano or vim slash etc. default grub. We're gonna go to the grub CMD line Linux. In between the quotes, let's insert crypt device equals capital UUID equals and then that UUID number. Let me enter mine. As stated, mine starts with 03C and ends with 8827. After you've entered that, put a colon and the name, which for us was looks root, and then space root equals slash dev slash mapper slash lux root. After you've entered that crypt device line, save the file. And now we can run a grub dash mk config dash o slash boot slash grub slash grub dot cfg. All right, I'll clear the screen. We'll run a system CTL, enable network manager, capital N, capital M. We'll run a system CTL, enable Bluetooth, 
we'll add a non root user, user add dash M capital G wheel group, and then your username. Mine is Techheart. Let's run a pass WD on your username. Now let's give him sudo access, type capital editor equals vim or nano if you're using nano, and then vice sudo. In this vice sudo file, go down to the first wheel line and remove the number sign in the space. So it says percent wheel, all equals all colon all space all, and save that file. Now your user has sudo access. Okay, we can exit the truth. Now we can umount slash mnt slash boot slash EFI, umount mnt boot, and umount slash mnt, and then we can reboot now. This will boot us into our new installed Arch Linux. Let's go! As you can see, we only have Arch Linux. We don't have our Windows. Are you scared yet? Let's boot into Arch Linux. We'll have to unlock our looks. So type in your looks password. Let's log in. I'll log in as root first. Let's run os-prober. We can see our Windows EFI. And now let's run grub-mkconfig slash o or dash o slash boot slash grub slash grub.cfg. And again, let's do a reboot now. All right, now we can see we have Arch Linux and Windows Boot Manager. So I'm gonna show booting into Windows just so you can see the dual boot. And after this, we'll get to the tech heart sauce, the coolest part of the video. So we're able to boot right into Windows. I'll just log in and I'm gonna reboot right now. You've noticed that Arch boot process and how boring it is. I'm going to show you the tech heart sauce that we're going to add on top of this dual boot system. So I'll click restart. This time I'll select Arch Linux to boot into. And let's get ready for the crazy baby. Let's unlock our Lux. Notice how boring this looks. See that text unlock part? Yuck. Ugh. I'll log in this time with our user. For me, it's tech heart. And I'll type our password. Again, I'm going to change the font just so it's easier for y'all to see. That's a little bit bigger. Now, if you type IPA, again, if you're on Ethernet, you'll see your password there and you can move forward. If not, we can now run NMTUI. And through this, you can activate a connection and simply go down to your Wi-Fi and enter the password. This will give you internet access and you can exit out. All right, let's get on to the fun parts. We're going to install AUR helpers, both yay and git. So we'll do git clone https colon slash slash aur.archlinux.org slash yay dot git. Yay is the most popular helper. We're also going to install Peru. But first, let's move into the yay directory and we'll run make pkg si. We'll let that finish. All right, easy peasy. I'll clear the screen. We can go cd dot dot to move out of there and rm slash rf yay. Now we'll run the same git clone https colon slash slash aur dot arch linux dot org slash peru dot git. Peru, in my opinion, is a better aur helper. If you don't know what the aur is, I'll put a link on the screen and it allows you to install packages that are not in the regular Arch repos. Type CD Peru, and then another make pkg si. This one will take a little bit longer. It's because it's a larger helper. Let's let that finish. We'll also want to sudo pacman s less. Less is needed for Peru, the AUR helper, to show package build stuff. Just install it, you need it. Now let's add some video drivers. sudo pacman s. First of all, if you're on an NVIDIA card, like a new NVIDIA card, you'd install NVIDIA, NVIDIA dash utils, NVIDIA dash settings. This will work on most of the newer NVIDIA cards. If you have an older NVIDIA card, you'll have to go to the Arch Wiki NVIDIA page. I'll put the link on the screen. 
but that's for NVIDIA cards. These three packages will get newer NVIDIA cards working. For the rest of us, on normal hardware, we'll run Pac-Man-S XF86-Video. If you're on AMD, it'll be AMD GPU, but I'm on Intel. So I'll install XF86-Video-Intel. Boom! All right, that's done. Now we're gonna get down to the extra tech heart sauce. First of all, I'll move into the downloads directory and then I'll run git clone dash dash depth space one https colon slash slash gitlab.com slash vandal byte slash dead sec dash grub dash theme dot git. This is a wicked cool grub theme. You can pick from 12 different themes and I'll put the link on the screen so you can pick the one you like. When that's done, I'll CD into deadsec grub theme and I'll run sudo python3 deadsec theme.py dash dash install. We're gonna pick the spyware theme, it's option K, but again, you can go to that GitLab site and pick your favorite theme. I'll select 1440p and I'll select color icons and it will install that into Grub. All right, I can clear. I'll CD dot dot. I'm not gonna remove that folder in case I want to pick another theme in the future. Now let's use Peru, that's the AUR helper. Peru dash S Plymouth dash theme dash Optimus dash Git. This is a Plymouth theme, which allows for graphical unlocking of our looks encrypted device and boot and shutdown graphics. We'll let that install. All right, we're all done. I'll clear the screen. We're gonna run Peru dash S Plymouth dash Git. This will give us the bleeding edge version of Plymouth, that GUI boot and shutdown application we're using. Okay, I'll clear the screen. Now, to make Plymouth operate correctly, we have to edit with nano or vim two files. The first is slash etc. mkinitcpio.conf. We've been in here before. Let's move down to the hooks line. And just before encrypt, we're going to add Plymouth. So you insert the word Plymouth right before encrypt and save that file. I'll clear. Now we can run sudo vim or nano slash etc. default grub. And we're gonna go to the grub underscore command line underscore Linux underscore default. And we wanna make sure on the end it says quiet and splash. I already have quiet, so I'll insert splash. Make sure your grub command Linux default line has both quiet and splash inserted on the end. Save that file, I'll clear. Now we can run a sudo grub dash mkconfig dash o slash boot grub grub dot cfg and let that run, clear. Next we'll run sudo plymouth dash set dash default dash theme dash capital R and optimus, which is our theme. And let that run, it'll rebuild mk and its cpio again. <laughs> All right, dudes, we're almost there. Now let's install that killer fire animation window manager with sudo pacman s ly ly. That'll be a quick one. Then we can run sudo systemctl enable ly.service. Then sudo disable getty at tty2.service. This is a security thing. It makes it so that users can't boot through your live window manager. Just trust me. Oh, I have to run sudo systemctl disable. There you go. sudo systemctl disable getty at tty2.service. And there we go. I'll clear the screen. Now let's edit that config file for lie sudo nano or vim slash etc slash lie config.ini. And we want to turn the animation to true, remove the number sign and change false to true. I want the animation to equal zero. That's the default. I'll still remove the number sign. I'll remove this clock number and I'll remove the big clock. Everybody wants a big clock. <laughs> the last thing is the asterisk. I'll remove the number sign and I like to use a cache symbol. So I'll enter cache. Let's save that file. Clear the screen. We also have to sudo slash user lib slash systemd slash system slash 
ly.service. The reason we have to edit this is sometimes when you use those animations on this window manager, it'll fail to show the animation. Before the exec start line, let's add another line. Exec start pre equals slash USR slash bin slash sleep space 0.5. Sleeping for half a second allows the animation to come up without issue. Write that file or save that file and clear. And now we can sudo shut down now and we'll get the fruits of our labor, baby. I'll power the machine back on. We now have this killer Grub2 theme. We can boot into Arch Linux or our Windows. Let's boot into Arch. We wanna see the rest of our sauce, baby. Remember before, we just had text to unlock our looks encryption. And now we have this killer graphical screen where we can unlock our looks partition. Also, when we shut down the computer, you'll see this instead of Linux garbly gook. And we have that killer LY window manager to log into our system. We can type our username, we can type our password. We actually do not have an X in it RC, so just move over to shell to log in. Make sure to come back for our follow-up videos where we customize both Windows and Arch Linux. I'm glad you hung out with us. Rock and roll, daddy-o. And from there, we're logged into our vanilla Arch Linux. We'll see you on the next video. Tech heart out.